Okay, I'm going to continue with the second, second example for hypothesis testing. This time we're going to test hypothesis for difference of two means, especially relevant when you say you want to claim, I improved the process. I have a granddaughter that uses diapers, so, the, so I say, uh, 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 Proctor Gamble say, oh, I improved the polymer, whatever, so improved the absorbency of a diaper by whatever milligram per uh, whatever ounce of my water. Oh yeah, let's do, go ahead and do a testing. So you're doing before and after testing. You do an example, and you want to see, again, the hypothesis statement you want to test is, is mu1 minus mu2, either before or after, doesn't matter. I like to keep this number positive. Okay, say this absorbency per square centimeter of uh, diaper area is uh, equal to always equality for H0 some number. And then this one is either larger than or so on. So this particular example I want to test, again, the pollution. You remember I did a pollution level, maybe you remember uh, in a confident interval. So I have a, a, a lake that I have a heavily polluted, some heavy metal, and I spent a lot of money, million dollar, a super fun site. I cleaned up the metal, heavy metal. I redo exemplary. I want to see if indeed uh, I had the, the effort to produce a positive reduction in the contaminant. So here's my sampling result, for instance. Along the lake, I, before, this is the before. I took it before sampling at 15 sites, and then after I have 12 sites, and maybe I ran out of money, I only did 12. But anyway, my sampling level, the pollution level before X1 bar is 3.84 milligram per liter, with S1 of so and so, 3.07. No, notice, this is rather large. This is 3.8, this is 3. So plus or minus, this will be 6 point something, this will be 1 point something. So there's a large variation between site to, between the 15 sites. That's just the way it is. So afterwards, uh, my X bar, X2 bar is 2.52. On the surface, nominally, it's a reduction of 1.3 or so. But don't take that as face as a reduction. You want to do a, either a confident interval construction or do a testing. This is just a 12 sample, so you don't know what the other testing might be. Here's the S2, 0.8, rather less variation now. So again, we want to test. So what is it you're testing? Suppose, again, depending on what your target you're shooting, EPS says, you have to reduce this by whatever number. But anyway, let's go ahead, erect this particular example, erect this particular no hypothesis. This is before. So this, if I reduced it, this will be positive number. So I want to test, can the reduction be as much as 1.4 milligram per liter. Now, if you take 3.84 minus this is 1.3 something, I'm a little ambitious. I want to see if actually it could be as much as 1.4, which you allowed. You don't have to test only below whatever the, the, the bar value gives you. On the other hand, then my alternate hypothesis, I wanted to see, I don't want to do not equal because I really want to see is actually less than that or not? Because why less? Again, 3.8 something minus is 1.3 something. So I cannot state this as a larger than 1.4. That would be contrary. It just not, this would be called inconsistent testing. It's not a valid testing. You have to erect your inequality according to what the actual uh, sampling results. So I'm in business now. I'm doing 95% confidence. Now what is the test that test you're going to compute? This is a little complicated because it involves two populations. So here's the formula I put it here. Again, don't memorize this. This is in any standard statistic textbook or handbook or one cheat sheet or whatever. If you take FE exam, this will be on your reference manual. So here's the thing. You compute a test statistic called either T or Z, depending on whether you combined uh, degree of freedom larger than 30 or not. Now, even though this is N1 plus N2, uh, I want to caution you, the combined sample points is not just 15 plus 12. It's rather some complicated formula. Again, uh, you don't have to memorize that. Anyway, this is what you compute. X1 bar minus X2 bar minus the delta mu naught. What delta mu naught? That's this number right here. This is your delta mu naught, the number you're testing, all right? On the bottom has to do with S1 squared, S2 squared, N1. Anyway, you calculate all of this, you come up with a number. That's called your test statistic. What's the effective degree of freedom? It's some complicated formula, a function of S1, S2, N1, N2. You can find it in any table. Anyway, I did all of that complicated arithmetic. So I come up with a mu equal to 16. Notice 
it's not 27. Uh, why 16? I depend on S1, S2, and so because this is rather large. This is small, so that has something to do with it. Anyway, you compute this t according to that formula, which I won't write down again, but I will just go ahead and write down this as to, uh, uh, let's see, 1.32, that's this minus this, minus, I want to test 1.40, that's this guy right here, divided by 3.07 squared divided by 15 plus 0 0.8 squared divided by 12 and the square root over this whole thing. Anyway, you compute that, and you'd get uh, minus 0 0.0969. Notice the minus, why minus? Because this number, which is the difference of x1 bar and x2 bar, is actually less than this. I want, I'm ambitious, I want to see if I actually reduce more for this number. Now, what table do you use, the z table or the t table? Okay. Our effective degree of freedom is 16, which is less than 30. Therefore, you use T table. 30 is a magic number. What about at 30? Ah, you can sort of get away with Z table. Remember, statistics is just a fuzzy uh, measurement, fuzzy number. Don't ever make hard and fast statement according on to whatever statistic you say. It's kind of, it, the words is kind of, appears to be, suggest, you know, everything's fuzzy. So don't ever debate, enter into any kind of a bet based on statistics. Okay, uh, this is not very good symmetrically, but hey, let's just say. So we're doing one tail test. You see here less than, so we're concerned with this area. So now I'm going to use my pink. This is forbidden area. Forbidden, not good. No good. No good. And this, everything here is okay. What is okay? Well, this number here we're testing. So first of all, we got to find its critical area. What is this critical area? I'm doing a T number, so I'm going to do a T number. If I want, I'm doing one tail. So that means I want the entire 5% over here. If I want 5% here, I want 95% over here. Because remember, we are always using the uh, guideline or the rule of thumb is that all the area referred to is to the right. So I want this to be a 95% over here in this blue OK region. And I want 5% in this forbidden region over here. I mean, if I'm doing nine, I'm doing one tail test. So you look at the T value that leads 5%, I'm uh, sorry, 95% to the right at the effective degree of freedom of 16. You look up that number under your T value, you find this is minus 1.746 right here. Here comes the acid test. The computed statistics is minus 0 0.0969. So you got to place it where? Where is that? Well, here's 1.97, so it's fairly here. So it's a half, about halfway. It's right here. This is your 0. Point, minus 0 0.09 something, 69 right here. Oh, it's in the OK region. What do I say about if it's the OK region? You accept H0. So you say since. Zero, minus 0 0.0969 is larger than this minus 1.7 something. Four. What does larger mean? It means to the right, but you can't really say that. I mean, that's not technically kosher. You say, since this is it, what do we do then? We go ahead, so this follows then, you go ahead and accept H0. And if you accept that, you have to reject H1. Now, that's your mathematical conclusion. What do you put in report again? If you're going to report, submit to management where you had to put in plain old English, because they, they don't know what accept H not mean. You say data supports or suggests, 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 I think it's suggests, plural, suggests that pollution level has been reduced by as much as, as what? This thing you tested, 1.40 milligram per liter. Now, this is what you put, and of course you, sh you show all these testing things and so on. However, suppose you're a little ambitious. You say, aha, uh -huh, it can be this. If I put 
I'm ambitious now. I want to be getting the biggest uh, uh, return for my money. I want to take, can I reduce by 1.60? What do you do? You put this 1.60. This become bigger, right? What does a bigger mean? You're going to push it to here. Suppose it still lies to the right of this minus 1.0. Then you still accept, yes, it can be as much as 1.6. Oh, I want to go to 1.7. I'm really, really greedy. So you keep testing, testing this test statistic value. You're going to keep moving, moving toward your critical value until it crosses the point. You no longer can accept whatever you put here. You got to accept this. That means less than. Then you quit there. Again, I want to emphasize that boundary, whatever you put here, it's going to be as high as the upper bound of your confidence interval that you, if you had calculated that. So instead of one point, again, hypotesting is a one point yes or no acceptance testing. Can something in the true population be as much as something? Or could it be not equal to that or less than equal to? If a yes, you accept this. If a yes, this, it does not mean cannot be 1.5 or higher or less. It just means, no, you can't, you can't rule out it can be as much as 1.4. So you say, I'm ambitious. Okay, so one last thing is if you're a Colgate Palmolive, you will say, I remember seeing Colgate improved formula, reduced the cavity by as much as 30%. What they did is they probably did a, uh, say they did a confidence interval, say the confidence interval says reduce maybe between 1% and, I don't know, 30%. You bet they're going to report the 30%. Are they wrong cheating uh, consumers? No, they're not wrong because that's what the test says. So if they test 30% here, they, then the result is going to say yes, you accept this. can be as high as 30%. But it can also be as low as 1% according to a confidence interval, but of course they won't tell you that because they're there for money and they want you to believe that they actually improve their process by leaps and bounds. So the, the take home lesson is be very careful when you read about numbers based on testing uh, of limited sample size, how you interpret that. To me, I favor the uh, confidence interval. So we will quit here. So uh, this is give you an example of how to use this and how to put in your report in plain old English.